Well, hey, would you look at that? A 3D print that's actually useful. This here is a truing stand for my bikes. And it's bikes with an S because how can you have just one, right? Now, having a true wheel is probably the best thing you can do for a safer and smoother ride. Uh, there are four components to being true. That is checking for side to side waver, for up and down hop, for curved dishing, and then for tension in the spokes. I'm not gonna get too much into all of what that means and how to actually check for that in this video. I wanna cover mostly about the stand itself, so I'm not blathering for too long. Um, but I will make another video describing that all in more detail. Now, this uh, stand is good for checking at least the side to side waver and the up and down hop, and kind of for the dishing. It's at least as useful as the $270 uh, park tool stand, and it is far, far more accurate than the uh, you know, truing with the zip ties in your fork hack. So it's a handy tool to have, and best of all, if you have a 3D printer, you can have it for basically free. You gotta buy a few things to put it together and you know, the filament of course, but basically free. And if you don't have a printer, hang on, keep listening, because I have solutions for you too. Starting at the top, we have a pair of plugs that hold the wheel by the skewer. And those stick into a piece of 14 gauge one by one inch square tubing I just had laying around the shop. I cut those to be 18 inches long, and that way they will fit any wheel I could want with room to spare. A little bit further down uh, on this post here, we have a slider that you can put either directly beside your rim to check for waver or beneath it to check for hop. And the rub indicator on here is on a quarter inch threaded rod so you can move it in and out, you know, fairly gradually. If you want to check for dish on the wheel, you can actually just pull it out and uh, flip it around and then compare where it sits in relation to your indicator. And that will get you at least roughly in the right range. There's actually a better method for checking dish accurately that I'll show you in the other video. Uh, going a bit further down, we have a couple of spacers and some 3 8 inch threaded rod. And these spacers here hold the posts at the right width for a um, 700C front wheel, your typical road bike wheel. Now to hold it for a rear wheel, which is slightly wider, you just add another set of spacers inside here. And for other wheels still, you just use other spacers on top of that. Um, that way you have some adjustment and you can make these posts fit the hub. Uh, those posts also run through a piece of one by two inch steel and that all gets clamped into your bench vise. Simple as that. This is actually the second gen model of this truing stand with the first one right here behind it. So I built this guy uh, about three months ago. And you can see here, this bracket was just a plain old L. And the other one used to be too, until I broke it and then had to go back and rebuild it with the reinforcements. Just like you see here and on the newer version. Uh, the rub indicator for this guy was actually just a piece of steel rod that I held, held in place by magnets with scotch tape on the end. And that way the tape would act as the rubber as opposed to um, the steel itself, which would scratch the rim. So this guy here was a little bit crude, uh, but it worked. And when I used uh, this in combination with the dial indicator, uh, you know, put here in a mag base on the bench vise, I can get my wheels to within like five thou, which is pretty crazy. Now, as for objections to the design, like, you know, I don't have this or I don't have that, don't worry, I have you covered. If you end up making this plug and it's too big for your tube, say, because you only can get 11 gauge rather than 14 gauge, right? Well, that's simple. You just sand the plug down until it fits. If uh, you have the reverse problem and the plug is too small, you can't see it here, but actually inside the plug, there's a hole on this end and this end, so you can just drill through the tube and hold it into the sheet metal screw. And that way it's never coming out. If you can't get steel at all, well, then I have another screw hole here on the top, you can see it right there. And that means you can replace this whole piece of tube with a piece of one by one hardwood and then screw it in from the top. You know, just cut the uh, plug off and screw it in that way. So you can get, uh, well, I think, a piece of one by one by three foot oak at Home Depot for like $4. So it's three feet, cut it in half, get the same thing I have here. If you don't have the uh, quarter inch tap to make the threads for this guy here, 
Well, either just drill it out and use a smooth rod, or you can glue a quarter inch nut onto this face or this face and then thread it in that way. To be honest, I'm not terribly happy with the play in this threading anyway, but it does, you know, it does well enough. If you can't get the one by two inch rectangular tube to mount to your vise, that's okay. Just get a piece of two by four inch lumber, um, use that, and as long as you adjust your spacers, everything can still have the right spacing. If you don't have the vise to actually mount the whole thing in, again, just use the lumber and you can screw in from the bottom into a plywood base. Now, if you don't have the drill to make these holes right here, well, that really is a personal problem. You should just go buy one of those, okay? <laughs> but buying a 3D printer, if you don't have that, is a much bigger investment and really not something everyone needs to do. Luckily, this design is simple enough. It really does not require a 3D printer. Like up here, if you just use the one by one inch oak as your upright, you can put any scrap piece of metal you want here, just a, a bracket or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's a straight piece of metal screwed in the side and then cut those V notches with a hacksaw or a file. As long as they're roughly correct and they hold this wheel still in space, that's all that matters. The wheel just has to spin, you know, still in relation to this axis here. It does not matter how pretty these V notches are. It will work either way. You can drill some holes in the one by one here to like actually line up for the rub indicator. Um, and then for checking your hop, you can actually use a piece of like copper wire, screw that in the base here and like just bend it up to rub or not to rub against the rim. That was actually uh, one thing I'd done on the eh, Gen 1 version here was I had this guy screwed right there on the base. I eventually just found the uh, magnets and the sticks to work a little bit easier. But, you know, all these problems are simple enough that they can be surmounted. And if you really want the uh, 3D printed plastic parts, I might make them available on like Etsy or eBay or something if there is a demand for that. Um, I can't make them like crazy cheap because I still have to print them and pack them and ship them myself. Um, but I can make them at least far more affordable than the $270 perk tool stand. Now, I have a few perk tool tools. They are all fantastic and I love them dearly, but 270 is a lot to spend on a trunk stand when you're not a professional bike mechanic. So it's really great to have this for, you know, a couple of bucks really, like maybe $10 in total materials here. It's a really nice thing to have. I guess lastly, if you don't like the way this thing's designed, either with, you know, using uh, American size bolts and you want to use metric or just the way it looks or whatever. Uh, I actually designed these parts with open source uh, CAD software and Python scripts. So I'm making those files available down below in addition to the actual printer files themselves. I'm not going to publish this video until they are available down below. So you can check there um, and enjoy. Yeah.